and say, I don't agree with that. Because then I'm going to say, why do you not agree with that? Okay? And then you can have a conversation about it. But just to say, I don't agree with it, well, why? Just don't. That's not good enough. Is that fair? That, that's not good enough. Just to say, well, I just disagree with it. No, no, that's not good enough. If you're going to disagree, then have a reason. Have an opinion. Even if it's a wrong one, have one. Just because is not good enough. And I'm going to tell you this. I don't, need, I don't even think it's fair to tell our kids just because I said so. That's insulting. Have a reason. If you can't do that, have a reason for it. And if the reason is something they don't need to know, then tell them that. I, do, I not do, do I not do that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Your brother is cruising. All right, it, I, I tell them. I can't tell you why, but I got a reason. Okay, because kids don't need to know all the grown folks' business. Okay? Does that make sense what I just said about disagreeing? Yes. That it can be healthy, make you a better person, a better thinker. And then there's enjoyment, gratification of companionship, enjoying the journey together. I get to work at the funeral home, and I say get to because I, I do enjoy working at the funeral home. But I, if I had a dollar for every time that I hear families say it, I've heard it at my own but I hear them say, we're going to have to start getting together in happier times. We're going to have to start getting together when ain't somebody dead and we're all sad. Because even at a funeral, people enjoy getting together. Amen. You know, Brother Pete, we say every year we go to Boyette's. We're going to have to do this two or three more times a year. We have too good a time to not do it. And you know when we say it again? The next year. Fortunately, now we do it twice because we get to go do it on my birthday and then we get to go do it on Brother McKinney's birthday. But we can do it on somebody else's birthday. But the point is, is when you get down to the root thing, we enjoy being together. Amen. I mean, listen to me, do we not? We all, nobody ever leaves Boyette saying, I had a stinking time. The food was horrible. The service was horrible. We, we, the truth of the matter is, Brother Billy, is it, in my case, and I like to eat, but the food is secondary. We had a good time booking beans. Do what now? We had a good time booking beans. Again. What's your pulling the, the pig weed? Yeah. Okay. We, am I not telling the truth that we always enjoy being together? Every time we have a dinner over here, we have a great time. Okay, but it seems like it's like pulling teeth to get it to happen. And then everybody says we had a great time. So just think about putting that principle into everyday life. Okay, we are, oh God have mercy. We are so much better together than we are separate. We are better together. We're smarter together. We're stronger together. We're richer together. We are better together. Then we are apart. I know I'm in the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm having a good old time. There's enjoyment of being together. Of enjoying the journey together. I remember, I don't remember who it was, but, but I remember when we first wanted to stop at the Dairy Queen after we left Boyette's. About half of them said, y'all are nuts. <laughs> this year, Brother Wimpy and his bunch beat me to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> it's just a matter of being together you don't know what you're missing brother Rice <laughs> alright now we get to get a little bit more real making and choosing friends the first thing we do is we got to seek out friendship we got to seek out friendship Invite people over to your house. Do you hear me? The half of you looking down. 
Half of you are looking through me. Half of you are thinking, you invited me your half. Yes, I did have to pray through before I taught this. Amanda told, Amanda told somebody the other day, and, and this really happened, we, we, we lived in the Cabana Courts when we started off. It wasn't called Cabana Courts then, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Brother David, it was terrible. It was an old trailer. When it rained, the rain poured down inside the door. I mean, you could put your hand right there and it would flood over it like a filter coming out of a swimming pool. I mean, it was flooding in. It was tough. It was tough. It really wasn't no place folks want to come to in the first place. We didn't even want to be there. We just had to. <laughs> and I'll be if Amanda didn't go to the store and buy a mat that said welcome on it. <laughs> And you know what I told her? I said, why in the world did you buy that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've changed a little. It's all about, I'm just honest. I had a preacher tell me yesterday, because I, I talked to him, Brother Billy. I even told him about it. I didn't tell him who you were, but Brother Billy told me one time, I think you might be making yourself a little too vulnerable sometimes. Then he come back to me later and said, I think it's a good thing. I'm just human like the rest of y'all. Okay? I promise you, I ain't got my wings yet. Okay? I'm not perfect. Okay? I am not. I make mistakes. Generally, they got to do with this, okay? But I do make mistakes, okay? Seek out friendship. Seek out friendship. Proverbs 18 and 24 is applied. Be friendly, okay? Show yourself friendly to people. Apply that scripture in the normal context of friendliness leads to friendships. First thing, be friendly to everybody. Be friendly to everybody. Be sweet to the checkout girl. Be sweet to whoever's at the, at the drive through line. Be doubly sweet to the little waitress or waiter at the dinner place. They didn't cook your food. If it's bad, they didn't mess it up. They're doing the best they can. Be friendly. Speak to people for goodness sakes. It ain't hard. I didn't like it either. I'm thinking the same thing y'all are thinking. They don't care none about me. That's right. They don't even you know. But you know what, Miss Francis? I keep on saying hi. I keep on saying hi because I can't control them. Well, they won't say hi to me. That's all right. That's all right. They won't say a word to me. That's all right. They don't me half the time either. It happened to me today. Okay. It ain't a matter of what they do to us. That ain't what I'm talking about. Is it? That's all right. I love Miss Francis more than a whole lot of y'all. <laughs> Main reason is I don't have to ever guess with her. Some of y'all sometimes I wonder, y'all shake hands with me and I, I don't know if they like me or not. <laughs> but I don't ever have to worry about you, do I? No, you that's don't. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. She loves me. I love her too. But be friendly to folks. Okay, be friendly to people. My kids think I'm retarded. <laughs> Only because, Brother Billy, now listen to me, because we go somewhere and I make friends. I strike up conversation with people that, and they always say, Dad, who was that? I don't have any idea. <laughs> what are you doing talking to them then? Does that not happen? All the time. You know what, Brother David? God is my witness. If you sit there and talk to him long enough, y'all will know somebody, that the, the same people. That's right. <laughs> it, 
you can be off in Timbuktu somewhere and find common ground to start talking to somebody. Right. Build friendships. Build relationships. Amen. Scott Pepper and I got to be best friends because we got on the school bus together and he was looking at his yearbook and I said, I'm in there. Because I was a freshman and I got in there in the 8th grade. And you know what? He went home and told his mama, Mama, I found a friend today. I found a friend today. And he's still one of my best friends. You know? And that's when I was 14 years old. Now I'm reversed that, Brother McKinney. 41 years old. Be friendly to everyone. If it's just a smile, be friendly. Befriend those who need help and friendship. Create opportunities for friendship. The best way is neighborly actions. See somebody, uh, the, the other day, me and Brother Johnny, and I couldn't stop. I wanted to stop. I couldn't. Okay, there was somebody right in behind me. I didn't know where I was going. And there was a lady that had run her lawnmower in a ditch over by Braggadocia. I don't even know nobody in Braggadocia. Nobody. But she had run her mower down in the ditch and she was pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, where's Brother Johnny? I stopped. And then I about got run over. You know, and there wasn't nowhere to turn around. And it bothered me, Brother Billy, that I couldn't stop and just push that out for that lady. We got to get that kind of a mentality where we're looking for opportunities to make an impact on somebody. That's being friendly. That's being neighborly. And don't let a few nincompoops that get to get on the news stop you from helping folks. Amen. Most folks still want to be helped. Okay? Somebody's moving. Help them. Somebody goes on vacation and their grass gets about that tall. Go over and cut the grass for them. Uh, I remember that... Uh, Miss Howard, when we moved down here where you all live now, she, she baked a platter of chocolate chip cookies and brought them over to us the first night we lived there. And, and you know something, uh, Brother Pete, I didn't even know them people before that. We didn't even become close while we lived there, but every time I see them, we speak to each other. That's right. There's a relationship there. Okay? Do things to be friendly. Now, I know y'all like for me to get all spiritual and, and let us hang, run from the rafters and, and all of that stuff, but this practical stuff from Scripture has got to be applied to our life as much. Or you, let me tell you something. You don't have to be in the Holy Ghost to be friendly to people. Make a deliberate choice of close friends. Don't let that decision be made for you. Prayerfully seek those relationships and then prayerfully consider them after you got somebody picked out to make certain. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 in the King James Version says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 in the New King James Version says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. And in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 of the English Standard Version says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. It makes a difference who you run with. And there has to be a caveat because I'm saying be friendly and make friends. But when you start building close friendships, close relationships, be a little more particular. Be not deceived. What does that mean? What does be not deceived mean? What, in this context. Boy, I love that back there. Know who you're dealing with. Don't be thinking... That that applies to everybody but me. Huh? I know what the Bible says, but I can still run with them. I can still have those friendships. I can still have those relationships. The truth of the matter is you can't. Because the Bible says, don't be, don't be tricked into thinking that you can. Have relationships that are going to be detrimental to your walk with God.
Proverbs 22 and 24 says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. This is referring to choosing good, close relationships. Proverbs 22 and 24 in the English Standard Version said, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man. And then number three, this boy, this gets real. Oh goodness, I gotta hurry. <laughs> you didn't get too many amens there, Brother Marcus. Amen. I may have to turn this into two lessons. Or just move it on into the third one. Don't you cannot now listen, this is this is we brought in friendships into the church now. Okay? Don't be running around with people that ain't what they claim to be. Uh, that's in the Bible, Brother Terry. That, I got about three head nods and a couple of amens, and the rest of them thought, what in the world is he talking about? Don't run with those that profess to be right, and then when y'all get somewhere, they don't act right. 1 Corinthians 5, 9, 10, and 11. I wrote unto you in an epistle. There, there was actually 1 Corinthians. This is just free. 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians are actually 2 Corinthians and 3 Corinthians. There was a first letter that was written, Brother David, that we don't have, but he refers to it, and he's referring to it here. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. Meaning, I, I wasn't necessarily talking about the sinners in the world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for the only way you can get rid of them is don't live in the world. Okay? Because then you must needs go out of the world. You have to get caught up to, to not be around them kind of folks because they're in the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat, which is referred to fellowship. Okay? I don't know if that went over too good, but it's in the book, so it's just true. Okay? Just because a person claims to be right with God and comes in here and claps and shouts, when you go out with them and their wife and they order them a couple of things off the grown people menu, you might start saying, what's going on here? Especially if they've been in church. If they're new people, y'all understand babies is babies. Okay? Y'all understand that. Babies are babies. They don't know better in a lot of things. All right? But I'm talking about people you have relationships with, and then you find out, hey, listen to me. And I don't want to get too blunt because we got a few youngins around here, but I can tell you some stories make your toes curl. Off couples and stuff started being friends together in church. Okay? You, you, you cannot think that this is not going to happen to you. You've got to prayerfully consider these relationships because we're talking about building friendships that are going to help you make it to heaven. Amen? Amen? Understanding that this passage, this is not on your paper, but this passage that I just read to you must be reconciled with Galatians 6 and 1. You can't just kick people to the curb altogether. You can't just say, you dirty rotten sinner, you low down scoundrel, how dare you ask me to go somewhere with you when you're a hypocrite? You can't say that. All right? But you have to be wise, Brother Rice. We can't run with people that are not living right because it will rub off on you. All right? But you have to reconcile that with Galatians 6 and 1. And it's not on there, Brother Shannon. But you, you can turn it to there if you don't have them programmed. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Brethren, when you see a brother overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted so we can't get on our high horse as far as that goes and get self-righteous you understand what I'm saying that previous thing's not talking about I'm better than you are look down on people the thing is, is you got to guard your heart and you got to guard your mind you got to guard your life and you got to make sure you're so full of the Holy Ghost that they won't do that in front of you in the first place Amen. okay I can tell that didn't that, that didn't fly all that good but it's on the tape you got to be compatible both in spirit and purpose. You got to have a friend that's real and that you can respect. For an example, remember in school, 
And I, it happened to everybody. I mean, maybe you didn't participate, but there's things we didn't stop that we maybe could have. When the cool crowd, I remember, you know, it happened with Garrison, and I ought not tell it because it's good, and he's been making fun of me the whole time I've been preaching. But that's all right. He loves me. He don't have any choice. I pay for his lunches at school. Uh, there was a little boy, poor as Job's turkey. That family didn't have nothing. And he tried to sit with Garrison and them at school. And uh, this other kid said, get out of here. You're not sitting with us. And made fun of him and ridiculed him. And this ain't, this ain't godly. And I didn't teach him this at home, though I'm a little bit proud of him. Garrison jumped up, got that old boy's face, and said, if you say that to him again, I'm fixing to knock your head off. Now, I'm not saying that's the way we ought to do things, but I'm a little bit proud of him for doing it. Okay, that little boy was, didn't even have shoes to wear to school, Brother Billy. All right? But there are people that will go along. I've seen it happen. They will go along with bullying. They will go along with ridiculing. And know in their heart, man, that ain't cool. That ain't right. But because the crowd is doing it. You want friendships that you can respect them and you can respect yourself when you're hanging around with them. We need friends we can respect and respect ourselves while with them. We need friends that are dependable. Not only friends that are dependable, we need to seek to be dependable ourselves with realistic expectations. If you have to ask yourself, why in the world am I still in a friendship with these people? I don't enjoy it. They're not interesting. There's nothing we're having in common. We're not getting anywhere. If you have to ask yourself, why am I continuing to run with them? you probably need to reevaluate that relationship. Don't ever get into something and stay in it when it's detrimental to you just because you feel obligated. Take a stand. All right? I'm going to quit right there. I've got, I've got quite a bit more. I'll just get into this next week and then move along. I